Okay, so now that we've done a sub substantial work with Pauling's rules number one, we have covered um, pretty much how to look and see how to measure, first of all, how to create a table of atomic radii, and that's important because now we can uh, just arbitrarily take different atoms from the periodic table, ratio them, look at the compositions we'd like to build, and then figure out, all right, what what coordination do they need? What polyhedron do they need each? And then, you know, what space groups, you know, would be possible based on that? And it narrows it down, you know, quite a bit. Uh, now, there, that's fine, but then there's going to be lots of cases though, where there are several choices. So you want to think about the second rule, which is simply just saying charge, you know, has to work out, right? And so uh, we'll now talk about that rule. So in the second rule, it's trying to apply another criterion, which is very important. The first one does a whole lot, but then now we're going to talk about bonding and the strength of that bond. And it's the ratio of the cation charge to the coordination, to the coordination, uh, coordination number. So for example, um, let's suppose there's the charge. I'll just write it as Q on A whether it's, uh, you know, whatever its uh, uh, valence charge is, you know, and I divide it, right, uh, by the coordination number. So it's the strength of a bond. Now, in a stable structure, the total strength of the bonds that reach the anion in a coordination polyhedron from all neighboring cations is equal to the charge of the anion. So let's draw a picture. So here's an anion. And then the total strength, is it, this guy has, let's say, three bonds coming to it, right? So I have to say each one of these is this much. So 3 QA over CNA has to equal the charge on B. And of course that makes sense, right? Because uh, just like we did composition, this one's saying, hey, there's a partial charge on each one of these. And to have neutrality, this has some charge, and so I better have it that, you know, uh, whatever charge is contributed from each one of these guys, that has to equal the charge on this guy. And that makes perfect sense, right? It's basically uh, a, uh, oh, um, a neutral charge argument, okay? So let's just look at a few in detail. I think this one's pretty straightforward in terms of understanding. But let's look at the uh, sodium chloride structure. So each sodium atom, which has a plus charge, right, uh, is surrounded by six. So it's got Q and A, which is uh, one, and it's C N is six, right? So if I look, then the strength of the sodium bond is 1 over 6, right? Now, if I look at the uh, sodium chloride, sodium chloride is minus, so the Q of chlorine is 1. And the question is, how do these compare? So if I take uh, six times, I get the strength from each. So from a chlorine point of view, I have six, because don't forget my chlorine is six. So I have six of these bonds coming in uh, from uh, the chlorine. Uh, from yeah, from the sodium. Sorry, you know, into the chlorine. So uh, I have to have 
uh, 6 over 6, which is 1, which equals, so remember this comes from uh, the number, sorry, this coordination number around the chlorine, right, times the strength of the sodium bond. That's where that comes from. It equals 1, which also equals QCL. So all is good, and it works, right? And so that means that this structure makes sense from an electrical neutrality point of view. Let's look at a little more complicated structure. Uh, this is a spinel. And uh, we have magnesium, aluminum, and oxygen in here. And you see that here. Magnesium, aluminum, oxygen. And there's different uh, coordination. So let's look at this. So this is a spinel. And it is Mg. Al2O4. So the strength of the magnesium is that the magnesium charge is a 2. And its uh, coordination is 4. And uh, it's uh, difficult to see that, but you can see it here in that it has two bonds coming up this way and it would have two bonds going into the next uh, crystal structure right so it's a four it's in a tetrahedral you know type site so its strength is one half right and now let's look at the aluminum strength uh, it actually um, has three charge, right? Al aluminum has three. It's a valence of three. And it's, you know, a normal valence in this structure as aluminum usually is. And then uh, it actually is sharing six. And you can see that that's shown. Uh, well, you can sort of see it here. So you have this one here, this one here. There's going to be one going in the other one, one coming out here, coming up, one coming down. There's the six, right? So it's also a half, which is very interesting because, of course, this is symmetrically arranged so that each one is contributing a similar uh, strength, right? Now, if we look at each oxygen, so now we got to look at from the oxygen perspective, which is a minus two ion. Right, it is surrounded by three aluminum and one magnesium. And you can see that, let's see, um, here, I think, in this one. One, two, and there's a third one back there. You can just barely see this little yellow thing there. And then it's got uh, one magnesium, right? So uh, if we take uh, SMG times one plus SAL, times 3, that better equal the QO2, which is 2. So we substitute in 1 times 1 half plus 1 half times 3 equals 1 half plus 3 halves, which equals 2, and all is good. And so you can see that, of course, this is an existing structure, and so we know it has to work, and it's a stable structure, but uh, this just shows you how 
you could you could in principle if you didn't know this use this rule to determine you know oh i can imagine let's say three different types of structures but two of them this doesn't work out the charge is imbalanced and indeed the third one does and it's the spinel structure so hopefully that gives you a very uh between one and two now very powerful right those are the main rules and in the next lecture we'll just wrap it up talking about um, some finer points that happen in more complex structures but basically uh, between uh, rule one which is the sort of uh, radius coordination number uh, polyhedron in the in the, in the environment that you want in the space group combined with what we talk about here the second rule which is essentially electrical neutrality have to have you know real chemical bonding that doesn't produce any net charge uh, you pretty much can determine at least on ionic materials what the choices are